In this presentation, we will continue on with our comprehensive problem related to a not-for-profit hospital. We have the information on the left-hand side. We've been entering that information into the blue area on the right-hand side, into the general journal, journalizing the journal entries here, then posting those to our trial balance worksheet. We then, after entering the transactions for the time period, entered the closing process transactions down below. This time, we're going to be working on the financial statement, specifically the financial statement of the balance sheet. So we'll be taking a look at the balance sheet. As we do so, keep in mind that we will be working from the trial balance here. This is going to be the upper trial balance, the adjusted trial balance. So we had our beginning numbers. We entered our adjustments. We now have the ending numbers in the adjusted trial balance, the adjusted trial balance, then including the temporary accounts down below. These being the kind of like these similar to the income statement accounts. Down below this, we have the closing trial balance, which has the same ending numbers here that are the beginning numbers, which we then used to close out the temporary accounts, those dark blue accounts, those that would be similar to the income statement accounts, closing them out to zero closing them out to what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization to the net assets section within our organization here for the not-for-profit hospital. So these are going to be our numbers there. We're going to jump down here. We're going to have to jump down to these numbers when we consider the uh, last part of the balance sheet, that being the net assets component of the balance sheet. So if we scroll back up to the top, I'm first going to hide some cells. We don't really need these two cells, the beginning or these two columns, let's say, the beginning trial balance and the adjustments. Let's go ahead and hide those two. I'm going to put my cursor on column P, left click and select over to Q, let go, right click on the selected area and hide them. So we're going to hide those items. And then we have just the numbers we need so we don't kind of mistakenly pick up the wrong numbers. So, all right. We're just going to go from top to bottom. This is going to be the balance sheet. We're going to pick up the assets and the liabilities and then what would be the equity, in this case being the net assets. So let's see what it'll look like here. We're going to say first we start off with assets as we do for uh, a normal for-profit type of organization. We're going to have the subcategory of the current assets here. And so we're going to say picking up the current assets is going to be cash. We're going to pick up the accounts receivable, but we're going to call it accounts receivable net. We're going to group these two together. So I'm going to, well, I'm not going to paste the green. So I'll turn green. I'm going to paste it one, two, three, and then call it net. So the cash, then we're going to put this in the inner column, not because we're talking about debits and credits here, but because we're going to have a subcategory of these assets in the inner column. So there's going to be the cash. We're then going to sum up these. This equals the sum of the accounts receivable and the allowance. So there's going to be those two. Next, we're going to have the inventory. So we'll pick up the inventory. And that is going to be equal to the 90,200. And that will sum up to the current, the total current assets. So the total current assets, which we will break out to the outer column now using the trustee sum function, which will be equals the sum of those three numbers. Now we're going to have the assets that are going to be limited as to the usage. So this is another subcategory. You'll recall we marked that off in the trial bounds. Uh, just with naming each of accounts with that kind of title limited as to use. Now we're going to be recording that in order here. So we're going to be picking up the cash. I'm just going to call it cash instead of cash limited to use as it's seen here because we already have that title up top. And I'm going to put that in the inner column. Once again, it being a subcategory, having nothing to do with debits and credits on the balance sheet. We don't use debits and credits on the balance sheet. We use the accounting equation. So we're going to be picking up the 26390 then we have the investments receivable, I'm going to call it. The investments uh, receivable, or the, I'm sorry, the interest receivable, we're going to call it. This is going to be equal to the 1,630. And that's going to be, next we're going to have investments. So we're going to say the investments will be next because they're going to be limited as well. Again, it's going to be investments that are uh, assets limited as to use. And we're going to be saying that that's going to be equivalent to this 233.39. So there we have that. That should be it. That's going to be the three of them. We're then going to sum these up or total these out. And so that's going to be called total assets limited to use. We're going to put this into the outer column as is our typical format. When we have the subcategory, we're going to use the old trusty sum formula equals the sum of 
these three numbers. We're going to sum those up. There is our total there. Now, it might be useful at this point in time to mark off what we have done. We've done the cash. I'm going to put a little like a uh, yellow dot here to mark this off. So we did the cash. We did the uh, accounts receivable. The allowance is included because they were included net. Inventories included cash we did that was limited. We did this limited one and this limited one. We found a home for all of those. So we're going to go ahead and right click here. I'm going to put a yellow dot next to it to indicate that they have found a home that we've done a good job and those those accounts are home. I didn't want to do the yellow dot. Why didn't the yellow dot go there? It's actually a yellow square, yellow rectangle to be precise. Okay, so now we're going to go back over. The next category is going to be property, plant, and equipment. So we're going to be picking up the property, plant, and equipment. And then we're going to pick up the uh, accounts, which is going to be land first. That uh, we're going to pull into the enter column for the subcategorization, not having anything to do with debits and credits on the balance sheet. Then we're going to pick up the building, and I'm just going to simply call the building uh, recording it at net. So here's the building itself then we're going to say net to record it at net and that's going to be equal to the sum of and i don't know why i have a capital m there but don't worry about that so it's just the sum function and that's going to be this uh 4 million 521 the cost minus the accumulated depreciation so we want to pick those two up and their debit and the credit therefore they will subtract out that's going to be our number although it's a little small to be seen so if you ever see those uh then you need to widen the cells. So I'm going to highlight the, the columns and widen the columns so that I can see the number that is within them. Okay, so then we're going to go to the equipment. We're going to do the same thing for the equipment. So I'm going to paste it one, two, three, instead of having an equation so that I can put that little word next to it called net so that we can indicate that this is net of the depreciation. Then we'll sum these guys up. So there's the cost. There's the accumulated depreciation. There's the total. Next, we're going to total this out to the outer column. So we're going to total this out to the outer column. We'll be out here in V17. We're going to use our trusty sum formula equals the sum of these three accounts or these three numbers and enter. And so we could do a little bit of formatting here. I'm going to put an underline here, for example, by going to the home tab font and using this underline. We can put an underline here and I'm going to go to the home tab font and use that underline as well. And now it, it looks a lot better. It looks a lot better. Okay. So now we're going to have the total assets. Total assets is going to be the next one. And that'll be of course in the outer column, summing up the classes of assets we have, the current assets, the ones that are limited as to usage and the property plant and equipment. Once again, using our trusty sum function equals the sum of just the outer columns those three numbers don't worry about all the blank cells in between as long as we have those three numbers added then uh we're good okay and then we're going to go to the next half of the balance sheet which of course is the liabilities and net assets and we're going to start off with the liabilities the first liability uh component is going to be these current liabilities the current liabilities including the accounts payable the accrued payroll and the current portion of the mortgage payable picking up those three numbers we're going to flip the sign they're currently here as a negative we don't want negatives in our balance sheet we're going to put them into the inner column not because of debits and credits but because of a subcategorization and then flip the sign from negative to positive by instead of having an equals hitting negative here in the cell scrolling up to that seventy-eight thousand. Same thing here, negative of the 224, 590, and same here, negative of, and then we're picking up the uh, 545,000 and enter. And so those are going to be our, our uh, current liabilities. We're going to sum them out in the outer column by equal, entering equals the sum of those three numbers and enter. And then this is going to be our current liabilities. So those are our total current liabilities. Then we only have one long-term liability. So I'm not going to put another subcategory. I'm just going to say, hey, here's the long-term liability. We only have one. It's a long-term debt mortgage payable. That's going to be equal. I'm going to put it right into the outer column. I'm not going to do any inner column subcategorization type of thing in this case because there's only one thing in there. And therefore, 
we can put it directly into the outer column and not take up space of two rows. So I'm going to say negative of that 2,045, which flips the sign, has the positive number in our statement here. And then we're going to pick up the total liabilities. Total liabilities then summing up those two. We're going to say this equals the sum, trusty sum formula once again of those two numbers. There's our total. Next, we're going to have the one component that's a bit different. This is going to be, at least in, in wording and in format, what's included, is going to be net assets as opposed to equity. So you could think of it similar as equity, of course, because it's really all of these accounts down here. You, I mean, it would be the same thing. If you add up all these accounts, that's what it is. That's equity. So that's assets minus liabilities is equity, or we're just calling it here net assets. Now, uh, you might think that you have to do some other kind of calculations in order to get the groupings of these. And you'll recall that we're grouping these in three categories, that being uh, without donor restrictions, uh, with donor restrictions designated, and then with donor restrictions. So we have three categories, and that's the thing that's difficult to, to kind of think about because if we just look at the adjusted trial balance, we might not know how to do that categorization we might think that we should be doing the statement of operations in order to help with that breakout possibly. But uh, we can, if we didn't know the breakout, we can at least get the total first. And I really would think that the balance sheet is useful to do first because if you start with it, you can go from top to bottom and you can get something that's in balance and then just figure out from there a smaller puzzle, right? You're just limiting the puzzle. You've got something that's in balance and whole, then you just need to figure out some components and that's a smaller problem to do. So I think it's easier to do the balance sheet first. So therefore I would then put the total first here in the balance sheet and then go back and start working the components, the breaking out of these three categories. So this is what that would look like. So I know that the total is gonna be the negative sum of all of the blue accounts right would, which would be the credits minus the debits and enter now of course if you don't have this formatted in, in a nice format as we have done here with the credits being negative and the debits being positive allowing us to just subtract them out with a sum function which is great then you'd have to take all the credits and and then minus out all the debits which would be a kind of a pain but not too difficult really and then you can get to this number of course and you can basically see if you're in balance at least then go from there so how can we see if we're in balance? Then we would have our last line item, that being the total liabilities and net assets, where we can then sum up the outer columns, those being the total liabilities and the total, uh, the total net assets. So we're gonna say this equals the sum of these two numbers, liabilities and the net assets. That adds up to the 5,497,609. And that is equivalent to the number up here, 5,497,609. Therefore, we are in balance. And then you can go back in and say, okay, there, now I have the smaller problem of trying to figure out how to allocate this number, which I know is correct now, to these three categories. Okay, we've already done that, of course. We did that last time by doing the closing process. So we're going to pick these numbers up from the closing worksheet down here where we've done our allocation, closing out all the temporary accounts and reallocating as is appropriate to our three net asset uh, categories. So let's go ahead and just all we're going to do is now pick up these three numbers and they should then add up to our total. So we're going to be here in U28. Once again, I'm going to flip the sign by saying negative of scrolling back down this 2,267,750. And then we're in, uh, without donor restrictions, I'm going to say negative of, scrolling back down to that 258,529, enter. And then finally, with donor restrictions, I'm going to say negative of that uh, 78,740, and enter. Then we can resum them up in the outer column, equals the sum of those three numbers, and, and it should add up to the same number that will then put us back in balance here. So we're back in balance, so we look good. I'm gonna unblue this one now. And so that's gonna be our balance sheet. You'll see now that we of course have found a home for all of these numbers, and you can kind of think of it all the way through here. And now, or really, I'm gonna think about it through here. And you could say, well, we found a home for all of them, but these numbers down here, of course, we grouped together 
in the total net assets section. And therefore, we want to really break them out now, starting with the statement of operations, giving these number their own home. They want to basically move out and have another place. And so we're going to have another place called the statement of operations, where all of these accounts uh, can have more space and more of their own categorization.